Okay, so we're about to get married, and we were looking online for plans how to do a wedding arch that's a circle. Circle. There's lots of ones that are, you know, normal ones um, that are just rectangular, and we couldn't find it. So we're going to make a video for all, all of you to see how to do it yourself at home. Um, the first material you need is a piece of four by eight plywood. I think we use the thickness of probably three eighths of an inch. And the first thing you do is draw a line in the middle of it, which is approximately, you know, you just measure it out. And then we made a right angled line that goes straight down here. So you can make a radius of how big you want to make your circle. We're going to make our circle six and a half feet, which means that the uh, halfway point is three feet and three inches, which is 39 inches. And what we're doing is tracing with a piece of rope, um, a radius line, um, arcs, I guess they're called chords in circle speak. Um, that are all going to come together to form a circle. And so Janet, my partner, and I are just creating a line here, and then we're going to use a rope. We've already tested it to make sure that it works. So we're gonna use a rope over here that she's going to connect. I think you have that end of it, okay? And then we're just gonna use a pencil on the end of it. The rope follows the line here, and we're gonna just measure out um, our thickness of our uh, front of the circle is going to be one and a half inches. So we're going to take a ruler and measure out one and a half inches along this whole radius here. So I'm going to mark a line here for one and a half. I'm going to mark another one out for one and a half above that. You'll, you'll, you'll also ask, hey, but what about the width of my blade of my jigsaw? Um, I'm not really going to take account of, account of that because it's probably off by a sixteenth of an inch when I cut it anyway. And it will all be covered by flowers, so it doesn't have to be exactly a circle. Um, you're not going to want to circle the word for doing that. So I'm just going to just mark it up here. So one and a half is the first one. Three, four and a half, um, six, six and a half. Huh? Six Sorry, and a half. seven and a half. Just testing to see if you're listening. Um, and then nine. And then you kind of get the gist of it. See all those notches here? And then you're going to use that as a point to trace your circle. So I'll trace the first circle now to show you all how to do it. So I'm just going to hold it with my finger. And then Janet's going to pull it tight to the radius line. So I'm going to make sure she stays along that line. The line is the most important part. Dust off the sawdust off. Okay, so here it goes. Uh, oh, Janet, give me more slack here. More pull slack, yeah, okay. Right okay. Pull it tight right there. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. My foot's on the way, and this is going to trace the line like that. Pull back a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. And try to do it with one line, because I found if I made multiple lines, I cut the wrong line all the time. So uh, here we go. Oops. Pull tight, a little tighter, Janet. Okay. Yeah. hands my way. Up here, okay. Sorry for the music in the back. We live next to a Zumba studio, so you can hear them playing music in the background. Okay, so there it is. And so you eyeball it, it looks pretty clean, so that's one shot, one line. I'm gonna do the next line here, which is, the, this is my next cut. Of course, it helps me on two people. So if you see, I clamped it in the middle midpoint over here, and I also clamped it at the edge. Um, just make sure you don't um, saw it into your saw horses. And then I, I just figured I can cut three at a time. It makes it go much faster. If you zoom in here, Janet, you can see how they cut through three at a time to the halfway point. And then I shift the, the, horse, the saw horses this way and then cut that way. So that makes it go much, much faster. And again, roughly, um, if you're using a four foot piece of plywood or something just about that size, it's generally about six pieces of these cords to make one circle. We also found out that once you have a good piece as a master, it's almost like a ruler, so you can actually use it to mark off the next pieces. So you trace the line here, and then you move it up again and trace another line over here, and follow the arc. Um, the compass is probably still more accurate, but this is fast, faster, and it'll play depends on how accurate your cut was on the masterpiece. Okay, so now we've cut all our pieces. We've cut roughly about 12, probably 13 pieces. What you should do is, because we said it's roughly 6.3 um, by these cords per circle, Separate them out to like, so they're uniform. So I had some pieces that look a little skinnier, so they're in this stack. And some that are a little thicker, they're in this stack. Now what you're gonna do is, 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 the next part is really much easier with the compound miter saw, so hopefully you have one of these. Um, what you're gonna do is that you'll notice that the edges of these cords are actually straight. That's not what you want them. You want them actually cut like this. So I'm gonna stack these and start cutting them so they, are, they look like and connect together normally. If you notice by just going like this, they become like double rainbows. 
but when you cut them normally, they'll be kind of like this. Now we're going to discuss the cross braces for the um, arch. So what you're going to do is you're going to buy the cheapest piece of lumber at Home Depot, which is a furring strip. This is usually, um, I think, one and a half inches by three quarters inches. These are like two dollars each at Home Depot. This is eight feet. Now, we figured out that the optimum width of the arch is six inches. So you're going to build things like this, but you can make two heights of it. So for the first section of the arch, you're going to get six pieces of furring strip and cut them exactly six inches. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll clarify why. Then you're going to, for the first part of the arch, you're going to get two pieces, but actually you're going to make these pieces five and a quarter. And that's because they're going to be sandwiched in. Um, two lengths of this is approximately three quarters of an inch, and we'll show you. Now we're going to build the first section of the arch. I'll show you guys the technique for it, and you'll be able to apply it to finish up the entire arch, because I'm sure there's going to be some inconsistencies in the measurements at the end. So you take three of the cord pieces you have, I've already trimmed the edges like we showed before and make sure they're, they're actually square with each other. Now you're going to overlap and, and that actually helps you solve a lot of the fudge factor here. So what you do is you put them on the ground like this and you're going to have two, three, and then you're going to have an overlap here of about two inches. Okay. Where this is the lower piece and this is the higher piece. Okay. And then you're going to have the same thing here. You're going to have an overlap piece here, and you're going to overlap here about two inches. But make sure it still it holds the length of the circle. You'll see the circle taking shape. And what you're going to do is you're going to put a small little screw. I think this is about three quarters inch, right over here, right that. I'll leave that here. And you're going to put another screw, three quarters inch, right over here right down there. If you want to use glue, that's actually good too. We're not gluing ours now because we might need to take it apart to move it. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take, remember that these um, furring strips, you're going to take the longer ones, which are the six inch ones, and put them over here, like there, and the other long six inch one over here on the lower pieces. And then you're going to take the two shorter ones, uh, these are short ones, here's a short one, like this. And you're gonna put them about two thirds of the way there, here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna use a one and a quarter inch screw to um, go from the bottom here and the top here. But you're basically making this is gonna be the outer, and then you have a piece resting on top of it, which is gonna be also on the outer, like that. And then you're gonna have going down another inner piece here that tucks under here exactly the same overlap that you had before. And it's gonna rest on these shorter pieces like this. So again, I'm gonna come in a little closer and see. So again, tall piece, short piece, short piece, tall piece, lower, resting on top of it. And then you're gonna mirror it exactly the same on this side here, okay? And then I'm assuming you know the rest how to screw these together, but that's how the puzzle pieces get together. Okay, so here's the pieces finished. So you can see that that's the lower piece and here, the upper. And then I put other ones that brace it up here, like that. And then the other side, the two short ones, here's one short one, one short one. Those are the five and a quarter ones. And then that's the tall one again. Notice how it wedges into the thing. It makes it actually stronger here because it won't twist. For those of you that have air tools, you can drive a nail here, it's probably much faster. Okay, so you can see it's pretty solid, like yay. Um, and then if you hold it, it's actually rigidly, it's pretty rigid. Um, I also use glue where I could, on where, where the wood joins. So we're gonna try to fit this in the back of an SUV. So this is probably about 45% of it. And now that you guys have seen the technique of how to build this piece, you're going to actually you're not going to re repeat it and do another path because then it won't fit together. You have to look where the inner and outer pieces join and then use a combination of the short pieces, the five and a quarter pieces, and the six inch pieces to complete the rest of the circle. So out of the four by eight sheet of plywood, I think we estimated you should cut about 13 arcs across of it. And so when you built the first top part of the arch, you used six of them to make the three sections that you put together just before. And then you'll have six pieces left. So you'll use four pieces to make these two side pieces and thread them in the over under pattern. 
and then you'll be left with two more pieces for the bottom and we'll show you how to do that in the next frames where you use the last 13th piece to create sort of a bridge to even out the last pieces of the circle over there. So when you get to the end of the circle, uh, you'll find that you almost have enough pieces. And what we did here is, is because these are arcs, you actually have some play with it. So we've laid out the rest of the circle to make sure we still have the perfect um, shape. We put one piece here, um, which is a outside piece. And you notice we were short a little bit here. So we took one of our arcs and just cut, in, cut them into fourths to kind of give us the last amount of wiggle room. And so this last arc becomes the inner here and completes the rest of the circle. So remember you thread it so it's, it's outer, inner, um, outer, and you'll figure it out when you do your own circle. But this actually closes up the circle. I'm going to put some screws here just to hold them in place. Um, I did put a screw down there that's temporary because we can put this in the back of our car um, when we get to the site. Um, but this should finish the rest of it up. And I'm just going to cut the um, big blocks, the six inch ones and the five and a quarter is just to brace it. Um, okay, so we finished the bottom and you can look closely, you see that there, there was a under piece and then a final over piece for the bottom. And we, we cut these short as we showed before. Now the final, um, Connections, you really have to step back before you make the final screws and complete the circle to make sure the circle is truly a circle and not an ellipse. Um, if, you know, if it's lopsided, this is your last chance to kind of fix it, but hopefully everything else is round at the end. Circles are pretty forgiving as a geometric object and they're pretty stable once they, you get the true circle form. We left the bottom open to put a base in. For the base of the arch, you're going to use 2x4s to build what I call a smushed letter H. The horizontal parts of the H but you'll have two pieces that will run the, uh, across the length of the bottom of the arch and they'll fasten the arch and hold it at the very bottom. And then the vertical parts of the H will create two sort of stabilizing legs that keep the arch from tipping backwards or forward. And then finally, I use a 2x6 that you see here attached to the vertical part of the H and that um, on the top is beveled. And to that, I screw the cross members of the arch to it to hold it down. It makes a very strong platform and we'll show the finished one in the next video frames. Okay, here's the arch at its final location. Um, we disassemble it and had it in half and then separate it from the base before we brought it up here and uh, fit in the back of our trunk. And so here's the base. We paint, we match the color green for the bottom, but you can see the final version. The screws here. I use twigs in the rock as the shims over there, but you know, hey, you gotta do what you have to do. And here it is. So we'll see you hopefully later with the flowers on it. Charmaine, our florist, did a wonderful job with it. And they said it was a good arch. <laughs> I passed I passed the test. <laughs>